Hello and welcome! The third week of the Grand Naval Battles events has ended. Uh, I have detailed out the fourth week events. Uh, the first one is um, a replay contest for the best moment. The second one is a battleship duel contest that will happen on Saturday the 28th. And then there's a ship skin modding contest. And I hope you guys take part in them. If you want to know more then click on the link in the description of the video to go there. Anyways, moving on to the match, our hero today is uh, Shaw in the tier 5 Japanese destroyer the Minakaza. This match is on the map Trident. By the way, it's named Trident because the, the, the way the islands here are make a trident shape. Anyways, um, this is a nice match which shows um, how um, Capping wins games. Also, by the way, if you noticed at the start, for some reason it would just jump around weirdly in a way. It just didn't seem normal. Anyways, um, Shaw heads for the A-Cap immediately because Capping wins games. And he is in a destroyer. One grievance I have on this map is that uh, the cap zones are so close by to the spawns. Okay, actually the spawns are too close by to everything. However, there's an enemy Minakaza at the A-Cap and he has been spotted. So Shaw decides to just leave. Especially because the enemy Minekas is hunkering down with smoke and he has a Murmansk backing him up and it seems that Minekas is just gonna park over there. His engine is destroyed so he probably can't move too much but I mean he is inside smoke so it's okay. Shaw correctly drops some uh, torpedoes on that spot because you know what if uh, the guy just doesn't move. I think it's worth taking the gamble because especially in a destroyer at this tier because the torpedo cooldown is so short anyway. But then Shaw just decides to head for the B cap that nobody kept for some reason even though that Izakaza quite literally just came from that direction. Oh! And see, see it's completely worth it. That gamble just paid off com completely and he essentially didn't lose anything for it. But he just got a free kill. First blood and the devastating strike and he pr protected the A-cap. That's just really well done. I think it's worth it to fire these torpedoes here for the Minakaza. I think you could have just dropped all of them. Although I don't think they are gonna hit. But again, it's just nothing to fear. <clears throat> it seems that um, there's another Izakaza coming in from the other side so... Even just um, trying to avoid this Minakaza, you will still be in trouble. So, I don't know. I guess you're not gonna... I guess Shaw doesn't use smoke here. I probably would have, because I don't think I would want to dodge and um, just hope for the best from the Wyoming. He did get the cap though, because he got quite lucky. But now it's the fight against this Izakaza. I would torpedo like this as well, but I don't think they would hit. Um, Shaw used his smoke, so I guess now he's hunkering down in here. Time to fight the Izakaza with guns. That's a good shot. I would try more of those. Oh, and those torpedoes might actually do something. They are at least threatening to the Izakaza. By the way, it seems the replay is incredibly laggy. Although it might be just on Shaw's end, like he might have just played the game in this laggy state. Anyways, it seems these Izakaza did get away, but then again Shaw is not spotted anymore, so it's kind of okay. His team has to be cap. Um, they are taking the cap, although I'm not sure if they will be able to successfully take it. And Shaw starts heading towards the sea cap. I would do that as well. I don't know if I would try to get into the cap though, because there are quite many ships there. This Izakaza is annoying, but I mean, what can you do? He's quite far away, so it's not like Shaw can really hunt him down all that well. I think he's torpedoing the Congo, but again, I can't really, you know, select the right ships. Shaw decides to hang back here. Because, again, there's no point in rushing to your death. Let's see how are those torpedoes doing? Hmm... Maybe they weren't on the Kong after all. It's weird that incoming sign looks different than what I think they should look. And I'm pretty certain I don't have any mods for it. 
and I'm pretty certain that Shaw's mods should not affect it, which just makes me not understand what's going on. Perhaps I do have some mods affecting it. But this is like an old client version, so I don't know how it works. Anyways, it seems Shaw has turned around again and is heading towards the sea cap now. I think that's the right choice, because their team is behind. The, the only reason why they aren't losing pretty hard in points is the fact that, well, they have the big cap. Also, for surprisingly, the enemy carrier has died. I imagine that um, Jezura managed to do it, and his torpedoes actually picked off that destroyer, which I find incredibly surprising. So I guess now it's time to do a short-range uh, torpedo drop on the Congo, but he only has one, uh, pos one, you know, salvo or one launcher full of torpedoes available for it. I guess he has to um, use his guns instead. He can't go towards the cap. I think that would be too dangerous, and I think he agrees, which is why he isn't doing it. I'm just gonna shell the Congo here, I guess. Because why not? Oh, and the torpedoes might actually hit. Ooh, one of them is gonna hit. Yes! That's very good. This, for some reason, the Congo isn't shooting back. Like, uh, why are you focusing on the Omaha? The Minakas is a much bigger threat and much easier to kill. If you get five overpens, the Izakaza is dead. I mean, Minakaza, sorry. Minakaza. <clears throat> By the way, if Shaw actually plays with this lag, then I'm pretty surprised. I guess I can understand why he plays Warships, because... Uh, playing some other types of games might be even more difficult. Mm, with this kind of lag, and I think, yep, the Congo expired to the flooding. Or fire, I'm not sure. Flooding, because he doesn't have any fires. So, now the sea cap is actually free for the taking. So Shaw obviously heads towards the cap. For some reason that Wyoming and St. Louis are over there. I don't understand that one. That's like completely worthless. Shaw's team has not managed to take the cap, but uh, they are working on it. There is There are ships that are um, blocking it though, so it's not working out nicely. I think the fact that the enemy carrier has been slain is a really good um, chance or good thing for Shaw because this means he can use his concealment to do all kinds of crazy things and not have to um, worry about the fact that uh, the enemy carrier could just come and kill him. Anyways, it seems Shaw is intent on shooting this St. Louis or Wyoming, I mean torpedoing, not shooting, although I guess he might shoot as well. He's gonna get the C cap, but it seems one of the enemies has started capping the B area, so um, I guess it's time to turn around and go back for the um, B captain. After torpedoing or dropping some torpedoes on these guys, of course. Although I'm not sure if he actually can. It seems both are hiding behind the island pretty nicely to block that. Anyways, on the other side, there's the Furutaka that just kept B. And Shaw might have to fight that Furutaka to take B back, otherwise, the Furutaka might just protect it. Although it appears that the Furutaka is running aground. Anyways, um, okay, Shaw has set his sights now on the B cap, or the Furutaka at least. And that Furutaka definitely did run aground. So this might actually make it much easier to torpedo. Let's see how it goes. Although, on the other hand, um, the thing with um, torpedoing a ship that is going in reverse is the fact that. Uh, He's obviously going to stop going in reverse at some point. Question is, when? So it might be difficult to torpedo a target based on the um, prediction line because of it. Because, you know, ships usually don't go in reverse for too long, but who knows, he just might. So it might just un unintentionally defend the cap, I mean, um, protect against the torpedoes. So let's look at how those torpedoes... Oh my god, yeah, they are so much on court. Oh my god! Wow! Oh my god, that Furutaka got so incredibly lucky. Wow, that's unfucking real 
Wow. By the way, don't pay attention to this stuff because uh, apparently you can mess with it in the replays. Anyways, it seems uh, Shaw decided to uh, torpedo the... I think that was the St. Louis, actually. Oh well. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, I think these torpedoes are on a direct collision course with the St. Louis, and I don't know if the St. Louis can actually survive this anymore. Especially because he, the reaction was very late. Oh, he only actually took one. Okay, never mind. That's very surprising. It seems those guys want Cap C, but Shaw has his sights set on the B Cap already. So, Shaw is simply going for the B Cap. Because he was spotted, he just used the smoke screen to uh, dodge it. But goddamn, that Furutaka was so damn lucky. And those torpedoes expired, or, you know, ran out of range just before they got to the cruiser. So unlucky. Oh well. The enemy team has managed to cap the A area, and uh, now Shaw is going for the B cap. Which he should be able to get, I think. The Furutaka should be behind this island here. So I'm, I don't think the Furutaka can really interrupt it, but the thing is, the enemies are capping C now, which is a bit annoying because they might just take it. Okay, he is spotted. Surface spotted for a moment, even. And I don't think he saw by what. He knows there's a Furutaka in that uh, direction though. I I think I would just slow down and chill here for a moment to wait until the capping is done. And then try to poke around and uh, maybe torpedo the Furutaka or something. He spotted again. By what? I don't understand. There shouldn't be anything that has better concealment. So I don't get what the hell was spotting him. Is that like a replay bug again? Because I have had to restart this a few times because of replay bugs. Anyways, it seems the Furutaka is heading into the sea area. So Shaw just goes into the A-cap. Or goes for the ACAP because there's two battleships here who are prime torpedo targets. Not to mention that he might be able to get the ACAP uh, as well. So, yeah, probably if uh, Shaw hadn't capped B earlier and again and then capped C, he, his team should be pretty far behind. If you look at the ships left, his team only has four ships, the enemy has five. Luckily though, Shaw's team still has a carrier, and they have Shaw. Of course, so. Um, one of the battleships has left the cap, but the other one hasn't. So it seems Shaw is just gonna torpedo them. Unfortunately, they are... The ship is within uh, spotting detection range of Shaw, so he can't keep going forwards. Oh! That first shot was very lucky. Because it did get a fire, and uh, this Wyoming damage control parted immediately. So, what might happen now is the fact that is um, the Wyoming's damage control party might run out before the torpedoes actually hit. So, uh, this flooding might actually run rampant. And they did quite a bit of damage, and Shaw is gonna keep up uh, shooting his guns. There's no point in uh, using his uh, smoke screen yet. I think at least, because this Wyoming is not targeting him, neither is the um, Mayogi, and uh, that cruiser is... Uh, oh, that's the Furutaka, that one actually could shoot him. But now he's within secondary range of the Wyoming, and I'm not sure if this is a good idea to just keep going without smoke screening. It's okay though, I think it works out for him. Yep, it worked out fine. Wyoming died. Well, that Mayogi is next, but I think Shaw emphasizes the capping process more. Oh! Oh, I understand. Sorry, my bad. I I, I did not actually recognize the incoming uh, message. I understand now. Jesus, I have never seen that before. I have never seen the incoming shell alert uh, before because I have never used it. So that's why I didn't understand why it was different. Okay, that makes complete sense. But Shaw is gonna 
take the A cap. I guess if you use the incoming shell alert, then things aren't that difficult. You don't, you can railroad as much as you want. Because you have an indicator which tells you that, you know, there are shells incoming. I think the, um, I think the incoming shell alert skill makes most sense on uh, ships with really short reload times. That would usually spend a lot of time in um, artillery view like this. So that they wouldn't have to spam it. Anyways, um, he torpedoes the Furutaka before uh, he heads, o heads out towards the B area. And uh, some of these torpedoes are definitely going to hit. And this Furutaka is history. Oh, it actually took two of them. That's surprising. But anyways, he did get the Furutaka kill. Now it's against the St. Louis. Who is at half HP? Actually, no, it's more like one third. A bit above that. He drops torpedoes as a lead, and then if I were him, I would just turn in and start heading towards the beat cap, and then just smoke screen once you get inside the beat cap area. Then you can just shell freely. It seems that St. Louis is intent on fighting the Königsberg, though, or finish her off. I don't understand what she was doing, though. I would just head toward into the cap, although, yes, he is hiding nicely behind the island, so. Might be worth it. Let's check these torpedoes. Are they gonna hit? I don't, I don't think they are. Seems they have already missed the target. Oh, actually, no, maybe not. Oh, never mind. They expired. Oh well. I mean, like I said, I would have headed towards the captain, slowed down, and just smoke screen. And I mean, he's probably gonna do it anyway. Right now, at least. Because he is inside the cap, but. The St. Louis is within. Oh, actually, no, maybe he can kill the St. Louis before. But I don't understand. Why not just use the smoke screen? It makes sense. It's just so much. Um, how do you put it? Um, safer. I mean, you just. You're gambling with 3000 HP. Yes, the St. Louis probably won't kill you, but he could. It's not like you really need that um, smoke screen anyway. There's only one ship left, and you are probably going to head in the other direction towards the sea cap to, you know, and for more experience, because the game only has two minutes left. I would just go straight ahead with speed boost, and uh, it seems Shaw is of the same mind because he also just used speed boost and is heading towards the sea cap after he finished capping B. So. Definitely, um, this game would not have gone, gone anywhere near as well if Shaw had not kept uh, so many bases. He has five base caps so far, three solo caps and two shared ones. Even though he did all that, he still got two devastating strikes and the Kraken Unleashed and uh, Confederate. And he even got the first blood with that uh, rather lucky torpedo. And he is probably going to get the C cap as well. Because it doesn't take more than 90 seconds to cap C, although the only other option could be that uh, that battleship might die, but there isn't all that much there. The planes could kill it, but I think this cruiser is running away because she has 1000 HP, and we can't see the other battleship anyway. By the way, I don't actually know how long it takes to take a cap zone. It started at around 1 minute 36 seconds, something like that. So let's see how long it takes. It seems it'll take like 45 seconds or so. And it was done at 50 seconds or so, so that's 35 plus 9... 35 seconds, I mean 36 seconds... Plus 10... I said more or less, so let's say plus 9, so that is exactly 45 seconds. So I imagine capping takes 45 seconds. Today I learned. Anyways, um, well, at this point, the right course of action is to simply sit still. There's no reason to risk anything, because they are definitely going to win. Not to mention, I don't think he could even make it to the battleship, even if he tried, because 10 seconds left. And I think this is a great example of capping winning games. Although I guess he did get, play really well in the other sense as well, but 
he got six cap points. So congratulations, Shaw, you had an amazing match, like this is a prime example of capping winning games. Not to mention I think you got rewarded quite handsomely for it. So battle results. 326,000 credits, most of that is going to be profit because tier 5 ships cost like nothing to run. 5,000 base experience, 1,000 uh, free experience, 2 devastating strikes, 1 confederate, uh, 1 first blood and 1 kraken unleashed, 94,000 damage total. I think quite many of those were on like low tier ships or destroyers. 38 shell hits on target, 9 torpedo hits, 5 incapacitations, 1 ship destroyed, I mean 5 ships destroyed, 2 fires, 7 floodings, 3 base defenses, and 4 solo caps and 2 assisted base caps. That means a total of 6 caps in one match. That's a rather amazing result. I think, I think even... Barring all the other circumstances, you need a map like Trident for this to be really viable. I think it's much less likely to happen on something like Trap, where all the caps are much, much further apart. But very well done, and uh, this capping um, story showed rather well that it's important. Because even at the end, they didn't do all that well, even though they had all the cap zones. They might have already had lost the game if they hadn't got some of those, or if Shaw hadn't got some of those. So in the um, team score panel, Shaw has uh, 3,334 base experience. Number two is at si 1669. So Shaw carried this really hard, and like I said, Capstones give up ton of experience. Capping not only wins games, it gives you a whole shipload of experience as well. This is a really strong base experience result. Unfortunately, this game wasn't, you know, quite up to par with the other great tier 5 matches, but I thought this was a great match in itself. Not like for the competition, but the fact that um, it shows capping off so well, so, so damn well. Most of this experience is purely from capping. And I think that's rather amazing. 3000 experience in a tier 5 match where the tier 5 is the top tier. And there are like tier 3 enemies that uh, our player here killed. Well done. In the detailed report, you'll see how the 94,000 damage uh, is different. I mean, is uh, goes. It's 63,000 torpedo damage, um, 20,000 uh, flooding damage, 10,000 HE shell damage, and 500 uh, fire damage. So you can also see the five kills, and um, the match took 20 minutes. In that 20 minutes, Shaw managed to travel 106 kilometers. So in one hour, in one hour, he would have uh, sailed at around. Uh, so he sailed at around two, 320 kilometers an hour. I wish I had ships that fast, or I imagine the U.S. Navy wished they had ships that fast. So yeah, I like this match. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, then please subscribe and thanks for watching.